see how that work. Yeah, what up, world? Locksmith knowledge is the key. Hey, uh, happy feast day. First day of the feast on Eleven Bridge. I got me in transition. All right, got my steady. All right, we steady. All right, um, in transition on my way to class, actually, for the feast. And um, once I rap with you for a minute, because people have been talking about Passover Unleavened Bread the same day. And I know y'all heard that already, but uh, a dude actually gave me an explanation and said that Passover is 12 hour period, Unleavened Bread is 12 hour period. Now, I don't know if that's what everybody believe who believe that, but if that's the case, then I have been given opportunity to show why that's ridiculous. <laughs> why that's ridiculous. Right, so we're going to read uh, Exodus 12 and 13. Um, I know this is the day, the time period that everybody's reading that, so no big deal, right? we just going to read it too. And uh, we're going to get some understanding and uh, let us reason together, saith the Lord, about these uh, days, right? So we, we're going to read these chapters thinking about time, right? Before we think about salvation and sin and all that. This time we're going to focus on time, right? We're going to start this, it was Exodus 12 and 17. Mr. Reader, are you with me? Come on now, I hear you. Just come on and read it. And ye shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yeah. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Armies he bringing out of Egypt. Right? Now notice, if you read the rest of that chapter, he started off talking about Exodus. Now he's talking about Unleavened Bread. And then he flip out and say, man, this selfsame day I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Brought his past tense. And they hadn't even did the Passover yet. They hadn't even killed the lamb yet. And he talking about, I brought your armies out on the self-same day, talking about unleavened bread. So remember, our God calls them things that are not as though they were. He called it in from the beginning. You need to remember all that kind of stuff while you're reading, because he just called it on them, and they ain't even did the beginning. And he said, yeah, I did that already. Read. Therefore, shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Uh-huh. In the first month. On the fourteenth day of the month at even, yeah. ye shall eat unleavened bread and do what until else? the one and twentieth day of the month at even. I can dig it. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. True. Ye shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Why wouldn't you? Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and he, said unto yeah, them, Here we go, come on. Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and, and kill the Passover. Uh huh. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And do what else? And strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Now that's it right there. None of you shall go out of his house until the morning. Right, so you're taking the Passover, you're going to eat the Passover, and you're supposed to eat it at night, put the blood on your doorpost and eat it fast, and hurry up, have your loins, gird the shoes on your feet, but don't come out your house until the morning, right, that's when the sun come up, by the way, the morning, alright, so you spent all night of the Passover in the crib, alright, let's keep going, what happened? For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. Ah, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, yeah. and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, yeah. and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. So if you leave out the house, you're going to get caught slipping by that destroyer, you ain't going to be under the blood. So you can't leave the house. Read. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee, and to thy sons, yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it shall come to pass. When ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, Let's read. that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, no. What mean ye by this service? What I'm going to tell them. That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, up, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, yes. when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. Yes. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. Amen. And the children of Israel went away and, what they and do. did as the Lord had commanded Moses Ooh, and Aaron. Obedience, so baby. Did they. Obedience, baby. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. <laughs> and Pharaoh rose up in the night. 
he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. Yeah. And there was a great cry in Egypt. I bet it was. But there was not a house where there was not one dead. Hey, I don't mean to laugh at that because I'm the firstborn, so I empathize with the story. But read it. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, yeah. both ye and the children of Israel. And so he rose up in the night and he told Moses what he told him. Right? Moses told the people not to come out to the morning. So any messages that's going to be communicated, probably going to be communicated after sunrise, Mr. Pharaoh. Read it. Go, serve the Lord, as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone. Yeah. And bless me also. Bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people. And made them hurry they up. They might send them out of the land in haste. Now, they did make them hurry up. I give you that. I don't know if they made them hurry up 12 hours worth, but read. But they said, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. Uh -huh. Their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. Yes. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. Amen. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. Now, right there. That's another thing Moses told them to do was go borrow stuff. Right? And spoil the Egyptians. We're going to come up off of them. They've been eating off us for all this time. Go borrow stuff because you ain't never going to have to give it back because you ain't never going to see them again. Matter of fact, the Lord finna kill them. So, he went and got all this stuff. How long do you think it takes for Pharaoh to find out everybody did and then go get Moses? Moses come see him and then he say, hey, Moses, everybody get out and bless me too. And then Moses go leave. He tell his family, his family go tell everybody they know. Everybody tell everybody they know. And then... Everybody go to their neighbor that's Egyptian and go borrow something and then get the bread and stuff that don't have time to rise and leave. Now, first of all, your 12 hour period is already gone because you can't leave the house until the next day. And going to borrow and stuff from Egyptians means you're still in Egypt. It means you haven't left yet. All right, read. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians Turn so up. that they lent unto them such things as they required. Well, turn up. And they spoiled the Egyptians. They sent to that. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, uh -huh. about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. I don't know how far it is from uh, Ramses to Succoth. Um, I'm going to try to find out before this get posted. It should be in the description. If not, then leave me a comment. I'll tell you. Um, I'm sure it's a Google search away. But he says 600,000 footmen without the women and without the children, 600, that, that's half a million people. You're probably talking about a whole million when you bring the women and the children. And I know this is United States, right? And you know what I'm saying? Civil rights time was like 50 years ago. And since then, you know what I mean? Our elders basically failed us as far as politics go. So black Americans and probably white Americans too, we don't really understand what it means to organize a million people and have them move from one city to another. I know we don't understand how long something like that takes. I only get it because I study people and I study history, right? But that's not no quick endeavor. I tell you one thing, it's probably about 17, 18 people that I'm related to in the state of Illinois right now, in the city of Chicago rather. And if somebody told me I had to leave and hurry up and I had to take all them too, and I had to go tell all them too, it would probably take all day still. And it's only 20 of us. Right? So try to understand that even when that commandment go forth and they start moving around, like, boy, they still ain't left Egypt yet. They in Sukkot. Sukkot was in Egypt. Man, read. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. Not even just Israelites. It was other folks, too. Half a million. A cool milli. Read. And flocks and herds. Yeah. Even very much cattle. And what else? And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. Uh-huh. For it was not leavened. Amen. Because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. So now they done left Egypt and now they sit down and they cooking cakes now. At first, the first bread, the dough didn't get to rise. That's why it was unleavened. Now that they out, it is the feast. So now they cooking bread with no leaven. You know what I'm saying? So that, you know, half a million people move from one city to the other and then you sit down and have a meal. All that in 12 hours, huh? Finish this. Because we left off at 12, the end of 12, we had got to Sukkot and they had sat down to eat because a million people had just walked from one city to the next. And in the meantime, 
the Lord has spoke to Moses, spoke to the people. Pharaoh changed his mind. The people changed his mind. They went to chase the people down. And the Lord made them go a certain way in order to make Pharaoh come chase them down because he wanted to get it in one more again with Pharaoh. Right? Now, we still dealing with this time though because technically we still inside the Passover. Technically. Woo, the law out here, boy. Technically, we still inside the Passover. All night we stayed in the house. Then during the day, we went from one city to the next. It's a million of us. That's why it took all day. But the day not all the way over yet. Pharaoh done showed up and it's still the daytime. So we had 14 and um, what verse is that? 13. 14 and 13. Pick it up. And Moses said unto the people, What he say? Hear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. So the, the Egyptians are coming. And so, you know, Israel start crying. And Moses say, hey, be easy. See the salvation. Read. Which he will show to you today. Yeah. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today. What about them? Ye shall see them again no more forever. Woo! The Lord shall fight for you. Yes. And ye shall hold your peace. Yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? That's right. Speak unto the children of Israel. That they go forward. Go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground uh -huh. through the midst of the sea. Now, I know everybody think that our God is a God of magic. Like he was just like poof, and it was dry ground. But like, nah, man, nah. Our God is a God of knowledge. So let's know how this happened. Read it. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, yes, and upon will. all his host, yes, he did. upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen, uh -huh. and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, yes, they will. when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, what it do? moved and went behind them. So the angel that was leading them stopped and went behind them and what else happened and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face uh -huh. and stood behind them yeah and it came between the camp of the egyptians and the camp of israel and what it and do it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these uh. so that the one came not near the other all the night so it say the angel went and stood between israel and egypt and then the cloud went and stood between israel and egypt right so I don't know if this if it says it in this chapter I think it does and we're gonna read it if it does but it says that the Lord was in the pillar of the cloud and he went and troubled the Egyptians and we also gonna see how long he did that right so but for right now while the sea is getting ready to get split the Egyptians are coming so they went and stood and it was a wall between the two and what else happened and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, uh -huh. and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. So, hold on, I missed something. We said uh, in verse 19, he said that he went stood before him, I mean in verse 20, it's saying it came to pass that he stood between Israel and Egyptians so that the one came not towards the another all the night. Right? So we just had an all-nighter at the Passover when we couldn't leave the crib. And now we're at the Red Sea having another all-nighter. Right? That's two all-nighters. And then you go through the Red Sea. Still the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And you're about to get baptized because your sins was just passed over. You're about to live sin free. And you got to be baptized in order to be saved. So turn up and they're getting baptized in the Red Sea right now. We almost done. Read it. And the Egyptians pursued yeah. and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the uh -huh. Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire there and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And the morning is when he did that. Remember, the east wind was blowing all night. 
And then the Lord looked through in the morning and troubled the Egyptians. So technically, you know, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the day starts at night. So he stood between them all night at the beginning of the feast. And now in the daytime, in the morning, it's still the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And they still in Egypt. Way more than 12 hours. Right? Read. And took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. Yeah. But the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Ten plagues later, and he's just not figuring that out. Read. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. Yes, sir. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. And then and what? the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, mm. and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Oof. And the waters returned and covered the chariots yeah. and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There it. remained not so much as one of them. Not one. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them yeah. on their right hand and on their left. Yeah. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed in the Lord and his servant, Moses. I don't want to add to the word, but it should have wrote in that Israel believed for a minute, <laughs> and they feared God for a minute. But anyways, um, so yeah, definitely two separate days. Um, all night you was eating the Passover and then in the daytime of the Passover you was walking towards the Red Sea. When you got to the Red Sea you sat down and ate and then the Egyptians came and the Lord stood between y'all all night during the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread and in the morning that's when he split the Red Sea and you walked through it and then you came out self same day first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread turn all the way up or in the name of Jesus locksmith study the bible not the sermon two separate days two separate feasts one had they prepared for themselves any victual yeah now the sojourning of the children of israel who dwelt in egypt what happened? was 430 years uh -huh. and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years even the self-same self -same day it came to day. pass but all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. We almost there. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. Yes. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. Hey, matter of fact, let's go over to uh, chapter 13. I think that's done. Because now they done went from one city to the other. They done Exodus hate. 13. And now we in 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, What did he say? Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Yeah. This day came ye out in the month Abib. This day. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. So. All right. Now. That's my love.